So in today's video, we're gonna be building a 14 bolt rear steer axle. What this is for is this is part of my rock crawler uh, project build that I've been doing here on YouTube. And this is the rear axle portion of this. And so what we're gonna do is take this mid 80s style 14 bolt axle. I cut the ends off already. I uh, used the plasma cutter and cut off wheel to cut all the brackets off it. And I got it kind of all cleaned up. However, I wanna hit it with a sanding disc just one more time to smooth this out just a little bit more, to kind of get a, a nicer finish to it. Then what we did is we got a Dana 60 axle that I found off Craigslist, just the housing. I got it for only 50 bucks, so it was a killer deal. So anyway, I got the outer, I got the inner C, and the outer knuckle um, that I salvaged from that axle and then I just scrapped the rest. So that's a great way. So this, this 14 bolt I got for like 200 bucks and then I'm going to combine it with my $50 Dana 60 and then combine these two housings to make a rear steer axle for my new project. I've had this for a little while so I don't have the video of cutting off all the brackets and everything. I was originally going to put this on my current rock crawler. However, that was going to take quite a bit of work in changing the, the rear end around the whole back half of the chassis. So I just decided, hey, let's just start building another one and I'll try and do it at a little bit more of a budget per se. My kids are getting bigger. I don't know how much longer they'll fit in the back seat of my current rock crawler. So let's just build one that they can learn to drive as well. So that's kind of where this whole project is coming from. So what we're doing. <laughs> Like I said, we got the 14 bolt housing here. We cut the ends off and got it all cleaned up. Now what we have to do is get these outers on there. These inner C's, I should call them, from the Dana 60. The problem is, the problem is these, these don't, from the Dana 60 to the 14 bolt are two slightly different sizes. So basically, I still have the tube from the Dana 60 that I pressed out of here. There's two different ways I've seen people do this. One thing that they do is just leave the tube inside there and then get the, the tube machined down and you'd have to almost machine all of it out of there to fit tightly onto this 14 bolt tubing. The inside diameter of the Dana 60 and the inside diameter of the 14 bolt are the same. So one thing we could do is to sleeve it. So we take a, take a sleeve, a piece of tubing, and, and slide the Dana 60 uh, tube on there. And then we slide the, the sleeve inside of the 14 bolt tubing. And then so what we got here is a, it's a pretty decent fitting. It's not exact, I'd say it's not a tolerance fit, but that's one way that we can, um, what I'm gonna do is bevel this all down. I'm gonna take my grinder and bevel it. Then I'm gonna put these inner C's on there with the knuckles. Then I'm going to put the alignment bar. I've got an alignment bar. We're going to put it all the way through there so everything stays nice and straight. And then we're going to weld, uh, make sure we get our angles. So we got the angles of our inner C's. Make sure we get those set right. And then we're going to weld everything up. Um, that's how I'm going to kind of keep everything lined up. I've seen other people do it this way. It's worked just fine for rock crawling. Um, if it, you were wanting something more heavier duty than that, maybe maybe machining this, this piece of tubing out to be a press fit might be a better option. But I, I think this will be plenty sufficient for, for what we're doing. And then we're gonna focus also on getting the truss on here. When, when I cut these ends off, I cut them off so that so that we have the same size axle shaft on each side. And what that, what that did is make the pinion is now gonna be offset, but I'm gonna have the same size inner shaft because where those two shafts meet is actually like right here inside the pumpkin, and it's not over here like you think it would be. So when you look at the carrier, where the middle of the, where the two shafts come in is more like right around right here. So what I did was cut these off, so that I can have the same size spare shaft. So what I'm gonna do is run this truss backwards from the way it was designed so that it's more centered so that when I put the top brackets on right here, they're not completely offset off to the side so that they'll be more centered in the axle. So 
That's my plans uh, moving forward. I gotta trim this just a little bit so it fits better on the diff right there. And um, then we'll kind of start piecing this whole thing together. So I've got my truss uh, tacked on right here. I've got the alignment bar going through the middle and I've got each of these just kind of hanging loose. And what I'm going to do, <clears throat> what I'm gonna do to line all this up is I've got my angle finder. I made sure this was leveled this way and this way. And then so what I'm gonna do is set my angle finder on here and then put these at, I'd say about six degrees, seems to kind of be the average that people use. And I'm gonna set these at six degrees, so it's just kind of just like the front would be. And then I'm going to, well, I'm going to tack this around and kind of get it in place. And then just double check everything one more time. So I'm struggling just a little bit on this one, uh, trying to figure out the best place to put my hydraulic ram. Um, there's quite a few options, but I, I still, I've, I've tried several different variations. Originally, I was going to go like this and kind of do some flat plate to this plate and then tie this back, kind of triangulate it. But there's not enough room to get my diff, to get the differential in and out. Um, what I'm trying to do is keep everything in line, a straight line right here, and it's just not the most optimum place to be putting a ram. Because the other thing is the diff cover kind of comes down out like this and down, and I don't have my diff cover in for this one yet, but I have, I have it on order. But I can measure off my other uh, axle uh, to get a good idea about where it is. So. Another idea I was exploring was hanging the ram, kind of putting it upside down like this. It'd have to stick out just a hair more. And putting it upside down like that would really keep it perfectly straight in line. Um, then you can remove everything and pull the ram off uh, to get your diff out and everything. And it would keep everything high up out of the rocks. Um, so that's another option I'm exploring. Um, however, it does get a little tricky with the, with the mount and the cover, uh, making sure you can still get these bolts in and out and uh, to make sure everything's there. Um, I went back and I, I look at some other friends on how they've done these. And uh, one option, I saw that one friend I have uh, mounted it like this. Um, just kind of mounted it out like this, and then it, it clears the diff cover. It clears the diff cover, keeps it all pretty straight, and kind of is semi-protected by the diff cover that sticks out. So um, right now that's the option I'm leaning with. <clears throat> I'm looking at how, how could I mount this just about, oh, maybe about like that. And it keeps everything pretty straight in line, so 
Um, that's what I'm exploring right now and kind of what I want to try. And so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try, try and mount it like that and keep everything as straight as I can um, and keep it tucked in there so it's not sticking out far away because uh, I like to keep it all in there as far as I can and as straight as I can. So I'm going to figure out how I can do that. I'm going to have to cut some plate to kind of fill these holes and kind of tie all that together. Um, the, the only other thing is uh, these come with four clamps and I don't think I'm going to be able to use all four on this one, which I think will be fine. My other, my other axle only uses, my other rock crawler only uses two clamps and it's just fine. So, um, yep, I think that's what I'm going to try. So we'll see what I can come up with. So right now I've just got this all mocked up. And so this is just an idea of what I wanna do. So if I need to work on the diff, I can, I can pull the ram and everything off and then pull my, my carrier and everything out. And this keeps everything really nice and straight in line with the tops of these, uh, <clears throat> with the tops of these arms. So everything's uh, in, really good shape. I'm not going to fully weld this until I get my diff cover and put that diff cover on. Um, but I'm going to mock it in place and try and get everything pretty much about where I want. I might weld up some of the rest of the, uh, of the axle, but for right now, this is just going to stay kind of in mock up and yeah, see if we can, uh, see if we can make this work. Um, I hope that the diff, it should, by judging off my other one, and then the diff will add some added protection. I could always even make like a bumper type thing off of that diff cover, because it's just a fabricated diff cover, just to give this some added protection. But I got the clamps on each side here, and it should clamp down nice and tight. So. I hope this works. This is uh, this is kind of what I was aiming for, so that's what we're gonna try. <laughs> 